All right, everybody, you heard me talk about Michael McMillan. Of course, you guys talk about him all the time. The Bigfoot Collectors Club, I hear over and over in all of the letters you send. So here he is. He's here. Michael McMillan. Hi. Hello. Hi, Adela. How do you podcast with all of that incense in your face? <laughs> I've never, I never did it, but then I decided, why not? It kind of looks cool. It does look cool. It's very fun, but it also looks like it might get in the way. I love it. Oh, you mean like visually in the way? No, like like oh. like just going up your nose or making you cough. No, I hate okay. to tell you this, but this is like low key, like of what I usually do with smoke. Got I it. like a lot of the smoke. It yeah. burns everything off. I'm just yeah. picturing at some point you'll just have it so hazy in there that no one will be able to. Oh see no, you. I have done we'll just that. Be talking but... in a cloud. I've done that, but I've done that with the discs that you get, you know, kind of like, mm-hmm. yeah, um, that I've done, you know, for you guys. I have done that before, but no, this is just a little stick incense. Yeah, it's no big deal. Fair I got enough. it at the Ren Fair. All right. So um, let's get into it. Now, you you call it a poltergeist, you feel, about something that you think might have happened to you. So do well, you want to? I, I mean. Uh, let me just say, is what? it a poltergeist? I don't know. Well, what's your definition of a poltergeist? Let's, let's get into well, that. A poltergeist is a spirit or entity or sometimes psychokinetic activity that some people think is caused by pe- living people in the house where items will oh. be thrown about the room or move on their own volition. Poltergeist activity is just like any anything that's like, like, you know, when you hear stories about, oh, I left the kitchen and then I came back and all the ki- all the, ca- all the doors, were doors open. and cupboard doors mm-hmm. were open. That's like poltergeist activity. So something that was like breaking and you don't understand why um, stuff that gets knocked over that doesn't feel like it should get knocked over in, in my case could be, you know, p- considered poltergeist activity. And some people think it's like a spirit in the house and some people think it's a some people think it could be. Like someone going through emotional stuff a lot of times. And I, you know, I find this a little misogynistic, but a lot of times they would say that like when there's like a teenage girl in the house and she's like going through puberty, what? That, that it can cause psychokinetic kinetic activity in the house. Yeah. I or have just never heard of in this. General. Look it up. It's a thing. Yeah. But of course it has to be teenage girls. Well, in a lot of these stories where there's like big poltergeist activity, there's often teenage girls in the house. This I think is, it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a way to make uh, men more scared of <laughs> teenagers and women at the same time. So I would but, say women, yeah, in general, yeah. But because uh, they're like what? Because like when women get their cycle, they suddenly start like that's making, crazy. It's craziness. It's crazy man. Um. You might hear my dogs barking in the background. That's okay. Those of you listening at home, it's it's proper witching hour time here at my home. Okay. So I'm actually in the room where it happened because this is where I podcast from my home office. And if you can, if you can't see this at home unless there's a clip, but over my shoulder you can see a bookshelf with uh, some Star Wars memorabilia on top, some X-wing mm-hmm. fighters. Yeah, and that's where I had three framed prints up there and I was in the other room and they, they, I mean, they've been up there forever. I hadn't recently moved them and uh, I had just been cleaning in here. So somebody might say, maybe you bumped the bookshelf and didn't think about it or whatever. But what's funny is that where the frame fell had been right where I'd been standing about five minutes before. So maybe I did bump something. I don't know. Or maybe know. you're the teenage girl. That's... Maybe I'm the teenage girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was in the other room and I heard like a rattling and then a shatter. And I could not. I was like, what the hell was that? I thought something had. I thought the like cupboard in my kitchen that held all my glasses fell apart like it was so loud so i came i looked around the apartment it took me a minute to figure out oh it was definitely coming from the office because the first thing i poked in poked my head in here didn't see it right away 
checked the rest of the house, came back, saw that this one of these three frames that I had leaned against the top of this uh, pair of bookshelves had fallen. Now, it, it was just weird because I have no idea how this thing would tip over. It was leaned towards the wall. It's sitting about two feet back from the edge of the bookshelf. And it sits within a, as I said in the email, like an inch and a half or two inch cubby. So there's a rim around the top of the bookshelf that if it fell, it would be it would be leaning, you know, be slanted down upward. on it. Oh, OK. Yeah. And, and also mm -hmm. like, it, you know, so I, I don't know how this thing tipped away from the wall and then fell close enough to the edge that it tipped all the way over and fell. I fully am open to something happen. You know, it just it just fell. Right. But, you know, I do a podcast about Bigfoot and UFOs and ghosts. And so I thought, what if it's a poltergeist? And I, uh, I it freaked me out a little bit. I'll be honest, because I was just like, how the hell did this happen? Mm hmm. And I took a video that I sent to my fiance and I sent to the boys and I sent to you mm -hmm. and you were like, oh, yeah, for sure. Something's going on in there. So why don't you tell me what the hell is happening? OK, first of all, I have a couple of questions because this is what I like to do. I like to knock out what everybody's thinking at home, get it out of the way. Like it could be this could be that. We're in California, so you know there was no like earthquake, right? No earthquakes. Secondly, it was further away, at least it looked like, from the bookshelf. It wasn't like just in front of the bookshelf. It's no, it's not on the edge. And bear in mind, there were two other identical frames next to it that were that I if if this fell, why didn't they if, if there was a big bump mm -hmm. or a rumble and, and nothing else in my room in the office fell and I have like little action figures up here. I have Lego sets. This fell and I'm not, I don't know why this fell. You know what Second, I mean? And then the next question is, but what I'm trying to picture is the way it looked to me, but I could have been seeing it wrong. Did it fall in front of the bookshelf or like across the room? No, no, no. It fell. It fell within the realm of, if it fell off the bookshelf, it's about where it would have landed. So okay. there's that, okay. there's a knock against that. If it had flown across the room, yeah, that's what I, I thought. would have called a priest. I would have come over. You have to call a priest. I could get. I could I know, take I'm care kidding. of it. I'm kidding. I'm Although just saying. You, you would have been freaking out. It's it less about the the how it traveled and more about how it was right vaulted off of its perch. But, it's, ha but how it travels matters. Honestly, it goes from level like five to level 10 if it's right. thrown across the room. Right, right, right. This was not this was not like this would not make a very good scene out of a movie. I'll say that. OK. <laughs> OK, got it. You know, and there's a lot of room open here, including for myself uh, about skepticism. I know well, you're always having room for skepticism. What yeah. is not? Of course. Yeah, but I also have room. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm saying it, I'm pitching that it could be a poltergeist. So I have I have room sides. for it. To, yeah, I got both sides. OK. And then lastly, what's important to know is what was the picture about? This is very important. Well, because I heard you describe it on your podcast, the BCC Boys podcast, Bigfoot Collectors Club, but I didn't. I don't remember. So can you remind me? Uh, yes. And of course, I'm always forgetting the artist's name. It's um, not about the artist, just what the picture was it, about. It, it, it basically is a graphic of different locations from the original Star Wars. Okay. And this artist does, um, like different colored lines that represent where each character's path takes them through the story of the movie. And he does these for a lot of movies. And so the three of them were from Star Wars and then Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi specifically. And the original, the star, the one based on Star Wars, um, that's the one that fell. Okay, and that one is about hope, right? 
New Hope is the name of the. Yes, uh, I know. I just I wanted know. to say it out. But but also, there's a lot of Star Wars stuff in here, so you. Can... I know, but that particular one, because in my experience, I'm just telling you, when there's certain things that are thrown or fall, or there, usually the symbolism on it is for a reason. Right. Okay. 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 All right, and. I heard on the podcast, on your podcast, that you had a dream before. Can you describe the dream? Well, so this this came out of um, Riley had said maybe he said, in, uh, you know, because because I do have cats in the apartment right. currently, but they were not here at the time. They were up with my partner in Fresno. Okay, and. Riley had said it wasn't one of the cats. And I said, no, the cats weren't here. And then I went later. I was like, oh, that's very funny. that he mentions cats because the night before. And this is very common for me. I talk about this on the show that when I'm when I'm stressed or anxious, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'll 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 see I see things like for an instant or two before I'm fully awake. It's sort of a night terror kind of thing. Um, it's or it's my, sight. It's a little bit of hallucination. This is or like what my or it's psychic. Sight. But but anyway, the same. I had woken up and I and I thought I saw <laughs> like a cat, like a long haired cat, kind of like the ones that we have, but are not ours are Persians and Himalayans. This was like more of just like a regular cat with long hair. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was floating or being held right in front of my head as I was sleeping. And I was like, whoa. And then it, you know, it's, 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 it's there and gone as quickly as that. And and they're like static images. They don't move. Yes. And it's really like in that split second moment when I'm dead asleep and my eyes pop open, I'll see it. And then it's gone. So I just thought, well, in, when we were talking about it on the podcast, I was like, well, maybe it wasn't a cat, but maybe it was a poltergeist cat because I had that weird dream or that weird moment when I woke up. But the cat's colors, you said on your podcast, was white and gold. <sighs> Adela, I don't remember. It was. You did say that it, on your it, podcast. It was trans. It was like translucent. It would be like if someone took an old illustration of a cat like like and and it was like floating in the air with its like paws up and its tail down you know like a like the like letter j being held yeah being held just by like under its armpits but it was like it was more like i was seeing it in an outline i think i said of like white and blue yeah I white remember the oh, gold. okay white and blue that's important like neon blue yes that's important okay it actually means something okay don't 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 try that. To I'm laughing at myself. Why are you laughing at yourself? Well, because I, I mean, this look. What? I think this is all a bit of a stretch, but I also know to pay attention to the clues as you know, I'm trying to look at the big picture here. You have to realize that that realm talks in symbolisms. OK. And they talk in symbolisms that people can handle. Right. Okay. Now, if so, you don't tell me this cat was an alien. <laughs> no, it was not an alien. Like I said, it's symbolism. Okay, we'll, we'll put a little, we'll put a little, put a little mood oh, to yeah, the like to that. it. Okay. So this is what I feel. With first of all, to me, just to set the you know the record, poltergeist to me is kind of like crazy stuff happening like crazy and also to me it is usually spirits not teenage girls just for the record everybody okay but also um it's just to me paranormal activity i would say i feel somebody absolutely was trying to get your attention purposely they will use things that have that's why i said what's on there is important like someone was on this podcast where a cup fell and that cup had symbolisms that meant something to her and the sister or somebody who right. died I, right? I remember this right yes, I remember so they'll they'll do that on purpose right. okay 
why you ask because everyone wants to know why don't they just like hey what's up michael this is what we got to say because you would then run getting a priest and freak out someone just walked up to you and just started telling you stuff straightforward right so it always the, the reason why it's subtle is because it's the agreement we that realm has with this realm to kind of try to be subtle as possible to not freak you out too much but get your attention so let's start with the dream the dream because it's connected the cat represents of course sight blue and gold is very much part of symbolism or it's not even just symbolism but it's energy that i always work with whenever i work with people trying to help them open up and connect to that realm i put gold around mm -hmm. and it's for protection that energy is a vibration that usually is associated with like angelic type energy. Okay. Protectors protecting you. Okay. Blue as well is to help protect and cleanse the spirit. Also cats are symbolic for sight. Okay. Okay. So it can be like, instead of showing up like a ball, which yes, I have seen alien Things attached to that. Blue I knew you were going to take it in this direction. I told you not to. <laughs> but I mean, you're you're listen. You can't do a whole podcast about this stuff and then not actually get I know, in I, the I poll. Only, I only yell at you about it. <laughs> so, so yes, and since I believe angels and fae and fairies and all those things are aliens because they're not human to be fair mm -hmm. so technically they're alien they're kind of in the same family so you have to recognize it like just like if someone came to this earth right and they saw you and they saw riley and they saw bryce and they described who they saw you guys would all be looking different so someone would say, oh, I, but the one I saw was tall and he looked like, and they look like this. And the one I saw looked like this and he had some glasses on. Right, right. It right? shows up a little bit different to, to the user, depending on who no, you are. No, they're oh. actually different. Okay. Just as many different types of people there are here. Yes. There are just as many of different types okay, of aliens. Okay, don't call me like <laughs> a spiritual racist, Dela. I misunderstood what you were saying. I'm not. I'm trying to say to you. I'm not saying all spirits look the same, okay? I'm, I'm trying to say to you that I'm trying to say to you that, you know, they they all, their angels have a yeah. different job, just like how I've been shown, like different aliens are doctors. Then there's the scientists. Okay. Right, then there's right. the people who study the earth. And then... I call them people, but you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah, okay. So the angels are like, we're aliens too. We're not human, but we do try to help people kind of wake up to other things. And we do work with their spirit more. We're not into the whole doctor stuff. Okay. Okay. So it's one and the same to me. So I feel something was trying to get your attention, telling you like there's going to be new hope. Things are going to lift up. There's hope in your life. It's not a negative, like crash all your hope. I know that's how it could be interpreted. That I hadn't thought about that until now. I mean, that's the <laughs> one thing about the sign was it was it was such a mess to clean up. And I was worried about when the cats did come back and this is their room, them, you know, walking on glass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Which is also very interesting. So, like, that's another cat connection. You know what I mean? That it but happened. Didn't you, wasn't that after you had the dream first, right? Yeah, I had the dream first. Okay, so. Sorry, my dogs are barking that's at a okay. squirrel outside. It's driving me crazy. Um, I found an illustration from the Wizard of Oz book series, the original. Okay. Of the glass cat. And that's what the cat looked like. It was sort of this oh. style. Oh, okay. And translucent like that. I'm yeah, holding up a photo. Everyone at I home, see. just Google it... Glass Cat Oz, and you'll see what I'm, I'm what I'm saying. Yes, and I'll I'll post it. But here's the thing: the reason why it's translucent is because those vibrations. This is why it happens all the time. They have to slow the vibration down very slow because we're in a very 
molasses vibration frequency. So molasses. that's why, like, it's slow here. It's very sweet slow and tasty. here. Huh? What? A little sweet and tasty. We're in the syrup universe. <laughs> It's a syrup universe, but it's also it's also kind of slothy. Yeah, it's very slow here, so they have to like slow it all the way down to like digital instead of Wi-Fi, and so the connection will be like like that. Okay. So I know that you want to just not connect all these dots, but connect. I'm connecting all the dots because my feeling is that. This is definitely connected to something trying to let you know that there's new hope and um, there is protection and open your side up. Kind of something, I don't know. It's always I mean, being told to you. I'll say this. It got my attention if that was the point. I yes. didn't appreciate the mess. And also, you know, I had that one professionally framed and it cost a lot of money. And then I, I also told whoever it was, I said, don't do that again. Get out. <laughs> so I so think you're can... being like demanding with the beings now. I you're... thought it was a poltergeist. I said, get the fuck out of my house. But you're like, hey, don't mess up my frames. Don't break my stuff. They're trying no. to bring you like hope and love and, and help. Then put a flower on my pillow. Don't break my things. It got you know your what attention, I mean? right? That wouldn't get your attention. See, that's the thing. They have to do things to get your attention. That's the okay. point. Okay. All right. Well, look, I, I like the positive message. I Now I need to ask you something. Uh-oh. What? When we first talked about this. Yeah. You said you sensed that maybe there was some kind of male mm -hmm. spirit presence about yeah, I think the guy was holding the cat. Okay. But that's yeah, what I'm trying to say to okay. you. They kind of work together. It's kind of hard. It's kind of like the angel. When I when I heard about your dream, I was like, oh, obviously this guy's working with these realms to kind of like go, hey, th this realms exist. Open your eyes. Open up your sight. We're trying to help you. They work together. That's okay. what people don't understand. It's not like... I feel like when I heard your podcast and you and Riley said he gave you that book, it would make sense to that book. I did get I did get a book on aliens just that like same day or the day before. And that's why I'm trying to tell you like okay. when you do stuff like this, Michael, you're mm -hmm. basically sending out a text saying, "Hey, yeah, I'm open to all these things, everybody who is in that realm." That makes sense. And also, the night before it happened, so then before I had the dream, we were recording an episode of the show with guest Katie Webb, and we were, we literally mentioned how you told us when we do this, we invite uh, activity into our homes. So that's also why I was like, is this a poltergeist? I just remembered this part. Sorry, everybody. But, um, <laughs> I did. I also sent it to mm -hmm. Katie Webb because I was like, remember last night when we were talking about this? Well, look at this. Yeah. And they and, and you know, I have. All right. So that that's another I have that's an another in, that in the bucket for for sp supernatural activity. And we were we all kind of work in the same together. They're like, hey, ready to show him what's up. Let's show him what's up. That's just kind of how it works. OK, so what's the next step? And uh, can they not break things? Yes, what you the next step is what would be great if you did is say, okay, I got it. Cool. I'm aware of it. What else do you want to tell me? Okay, cool. I got it. I'm aware of it. What else do you want to tell me? <laughs> okay, well then now we will see. Please don't make it scary. You could say that. And please don't break things. I just don't want things bro. I don't want a big mess. But it, but see, it's hard to get your attention because you'll okay, just well, brush things off to guys, like coincidences. Well, they have infinite spiritual powers. Get creative. <laughs> Come up with something. Look, if they if they made a book fly across the room or fall off a shelf, like like you know something that doesn't break. Great. Excuse excuse me. If if a book across 
flew across your shelf. Yeah. You would flip out. Yes, but it wouldn't be a mess. I don't want to clean up glass. That's Sometimes life's saying. messy, Michael. That's the message. Sometimes right. life is messy, but there's hope. Okay, great. A new hope. I love it. Yeah. So just kind of like try to start succumbing to the beings. Stop resisting. Okay. If you stop resisting, some cool stuff could happen. Okay. Just saying. Okay, I'll try. Just, I'm just a messenger, though. You know? What do I got to lose? Okay, well, you heard it here. So now we're ready for part two of this story. Okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate well, it. I, I, I'm teasing. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing me mostly. But yes. no, I, I look, I if cool stuff started happening, that's great. Yeah. And I, I understand what you're saying, but I do think listeners at home would kind of be on my side that like, you know, that's one of my favorite prints. Don't break like just like find something else. Listeners are going to say it was that reason it used that because sometimes that will happen. It will be something okay. very to because everybody just kind of ignores things. They just okay. kind of go, oh, that was this. Oh, that was that. People don't pay attention unless it hits them in a certain way. Okay. Literally. Okay. Okay. So what are you going to do? I'm going to remain open. Yay. Very good. Very good. I'll report. We'll see. I'll yeah. be listening Soon. to your podcast and hearing. Yeah. I'll, well, what you know, really I'll, te good. I'll text you before we, you know, you have to hear it in a podcast. Okay. So try to try to stay open. You can be logical. You can be practical, but you can't shut it all down with the logic and the practical. You can have one foot in, one foot out. I can't, or I you can. can. You can. Okay, I have yeah. to. You have to. Everybody. That's what I yeah. do. I'm yeah. not all the way in. Yeah. I have one foot in, one foot out. Okay. All cool. right. Yes. Thank you, Adela. All right. Well, tell um, everybody you know about your podcast and so where to follow oh. you and everything. Of course, uh, Bigfoot Collectors Club. Every Wednesday, we talk to amazing guests like Adela about their personal paranormal history. We share stories of high strangeness. We goof around. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a Patreon, BCC The Other Side. And you can currently also, if you want to hop on YouTube, we're uh, on YouTube at Bigfoot Collectors Club. And we have most of our backlog of our episodes are up there with some cool animated murals if you want a little visual along with the podcast it's uh it's not super fancy but it's very fun great artist um derek hayes did that for us so here you go google us you'll find us bigfoot bigfoot collectors club pretty much everybody i know you you know because i hear it every week so i know you know the bigfoot collectors club <laughs> But for those of you who don't, well, maybe check people, out. maybe, maybe people are listening and have heard that a lot and they haven't tried us, checked us out yet. Go find a Dale's episode, start there. And then yeah. uh, I think you'll like it. Definitely. Thank you, Michael. Thanks Thank for you, coming Adela. on. As Thank usual. You. All right. Bye. <laughs>